Hi everybody, welcome to yet another installment of the AB3 and Sammy show. Don't worry, I know a lot of you are wondering where the hell did Sammy go? Guess what? She's finished traveling the world for now and she'll be back next week. And we're excited to bring you our next episode finally jointly. But before that happens, I didn't want you guys to get too bored of not having a new episode. So here I am filming once again. So today's question comes from somebody in Long Island and her big question is, how do I keep a guy interested? She finally found a great guy she really likes and because it had been so long that she'd been in a long-term relationship, she's starting to get a little jittery on how to keep this guy. Uh, so here are a few tips that could help a lot of you girls going forward in terms of how to keep the guy. Uh, the first thing I'll say is tip number one, be yourself. Let's face it, you can pretend to be whoever you are or are not and at the end of the day, over time, uh, you know, the real you is going to come out. So there's really not much point in putting up a facade. And the funny thing is in life, this is the hardest thing for us to overcome. And it sounds to be the simplest, but it's really the most difficult. How do I be myself? As though it's some task one has to perform. Well, you know, that's actually a coming of age thing. Once we feel comfortable in our own skin, it's very easy to have more confidence in who we are as people. So we can also, you know, reflect that or project that on the outside. So just be yourself. Don't try too hard. Don't pretend to be somebody you're not. If you don't like punk rock and your boyfriend loves it, you don't have to pretend that you like it or love it, but give it a shot. You know, these are things couples do. So number one, number first, or pardon me, my first tip for you guys is be yourself. Drop the facade if you've ever had one and try to recognize whether you've been putting one up for all these years. So that's one great way to keep, help keep a guy. Number two is support him with his goals. Um, if your boyfriend has goals, and I hope he does unless he wrote some scrub, and if you are, you may want to consider checking out anyway, uh, support him in his goals. You know, years ago I went out with a girl who really didn't support me in my goals. I wanted to do my MBA and then I wanted to go to law school and that was a big issue for her because she was more concerned with when are we going to settle down, when are we going to get married, where are we going to live, this, that and the other. She was basically putting the you know, horse before the carriage, because if you want to buy a house and you want to afford a certain lifestyle, well, of course you have to go uh, to school and figure out that sort of plan. And I was certainly very hell bent on getting t my education taken care of. And she didn't support that at all. Uh, she put a lot of pressure on me to not necessarily not be in school, but she put a lot of pressure on me in terms of fast forwarding the relationship. And for me to do that, I would have had to abandon some pretty significant goals, which I've been, uh, achieved ultimately. But had I stuck with her, that wouldn't have happened. So make sure, it, you know, I'll tell you guys, support your guy with his goals, whatever they are. If he's going to work long hours every couple of weeks, don't complain that he doesn't spend enough time with you. Support him in it. You know, let's face it, if, especially for those of you that expect the guy to be the breadwinner, if you eventually have children, then you should definitely be cognizant of the fact that supporting his goals now will also pay off for you in the future because you'll have a healthier household. And if you do get married and have kids, you know, the goals that you're probably supporting from now will pay off financially in the future with, you know, the promotions he'll get from the time he spends at work, etc. So goal, you know, point number two is support your guy with his goals. Number three, don't nag him. I mean, this is one that is made famous by one of my favorite shows, Married with Children, with Peg, you know, nagging Al Bundy every day while he ha sat on his sofa after a long day at the shoe store with her yammering on about this, that, and the other. Please don't do that. You know, everybody has stresses in life, especially outside of the household. So coming home, which should be the peaceful castle, um, you know, for the guy to relax, is the, that's the last place he wants to hear somebody he loves complaining to him about whatever it may be. This is the opportunity for him to put his hand down his pants and uh, just relax with his girlfriend and watch some TV. The last thing he wants to do is come home from a stressful day at work and then have somebody, you know, moan and whine to him about who knows what. He just wants to chill out. So my third tip for you ladies is please don't nag your boyfriend and everything, every time you think you're about to do it, stop yourself or if you really are heated about something, go take a walk, leave the house or if you're not living together, just, you know, avoid the phone call until you yourself are in a better place and maybe you find a friend you can vent to because the worst thing for any couple to do is to both get home from work and start directing negative energy at each other. That is a surefire way to prematurely end a relationship. Uh, fourth point is help your man do things he can't do himself. Now, before you all call me sexist, uh, just consider this as simply an example, okay? Let's say your guy 
isn't great at cooking. I'll tell you what, I'm not bad at cooking, I just don't like doing it. And you know, the girls I've been with, I always like it if they know how to cook. And it's not, please don't jump down my throat about, oh, well you think women should be in the kitchen. That's not true whatsoever. I think everybody should focus on their core competency and that's more of a business thing. And so I'm not great at cooking, nor do I have the patience for it. So one good thing I like is when I have a girl that can, she knows how to cook. It kind of balances us out a little bit. So whatever your guy isn't good at doing or an area he needs help with, help him out with that. Identify that, you know, this, is he not doing his uh, laundry properly? Can he not have time to go do this for her, his car, get his oil changed? Just think of something. So think of something you can do that he can't, whether he's unable to do it or whether time constraints doesn't, don't allow him to do it. Just buying gifts all the time for the guy isn't always uh, what we want. We just want some support. And this will also help you win the guy over long term and maybe even get, to, get you to marriage because he'll see he has a real partner there, a real partner in crime. So you guys can always, always fit each other like a jigsaw puzzle. So number four is help your guy out in areas where you don't think he can help himself. Okay, now point number five and how to keep your guy. You know what? This goes back to my first point. Let him be him. Don't try to change him. Don't nag him about, why do you do this? Why do you do that? How come you don't spend enough time with me? You know, if you don't like the fact that he burps every now and then, you can mention it a little bit, but don't nag him about it. And depending on what age you are, you know, if you're in your 30s and he's in his 30s, I hate to tell you this, the guy's probably not going to change too much. And probably you are not either. So try to take people for what they are. Uh, and I say that tempered by the following. If he's got some drug addiction or something major going on, then okay, yeah, you know, these are some things you can change. But if, if they're just little innocuous things, and I'm going to give you an example. I went on a date once with a with this girl and we're sitting in the study room. This is back in law school and uh, You know I have this habit of and I don't know if it's a Canadian thing when we talk Or rather when we're listening and somebody's talking to us every now and then we go mm-hmm Mm-hmm as though you know, we're acknowledging What the person is saying to us we're recognizing that they're saying something to us and we're uh, You know expressing our acknowledgement of what they're saying and our understanding. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was in the study room with this girl in the state and after about three minutes out of the blue she just says can you stop and uh, I just look around and I'm like oh stop what what are you talking about she says you know going mm-hmm and I didn't even realize I was doing it and honestly I don't really do it that much but it annoyed the hell out of her and so within five or ten minutes of being on this little date if you want to call it that she was already trying to change something ingrained in me that is actually pretty normal for most of us in the modern world or even the developing world where we acknowledge somebody by making a little noise. So, you know, that's my biggest point for you guys and I can give you a million other examples and maybe I will in other, you know, broadcasts we do, but just don't try to change your guy. At least don't try to change all these little innocuous habits he has or little things he does because at the end of the day, you're not dating a robot. Okay, you're dating a human being who comes with his own type of speech, his own habits, his own hobbies, and if you don't like little tiny things about this guy, um, you might as well dump them because it seems like these are things that you probably even end up missing after a while because these are the things that make us who we are. So I hope these five points have helped you guys. I can think of another hundred, but just for brevity, I'd like you guys to at least absorb these few that I've given forward to you today into, you know, how to get a guy. And actually, you know, this works on both sides of the relationship. You may want to consider bringing these points up with your, you know, your spouse, your, um, your boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever the case may be, when you guys have some rocky patches. So, with all that said, I hope this uh, broadcast has been very informative for you guys. I'm excited to bring you another one shortly with Samantha when she is back. So, thanks for everything, and we look forward to seeing you next time.